Welcome back to Down Home with Dairy Ears. I just wanted to bring to you guys' attention. Um, I'm peeling these apples for an upcoming video. Um, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. Is your pantry ready? Are you ready? And is your homestead ready? What I mean by that is, I just got back from Tennessee. And I'm telling you what, <laughs> I'm cold. It was 25 and I wasn't ready for it. And I'm like, holy cow. Um, and normally, if I was back at my house there, um, I would have so much stuff going on, it'd be crazy. And I do have, um, like, everything's usually ready for the winter because I'm always stocked every winter, ready to roll. But the things that I think that you need to think about, if you're a person who's not ready, or I don't know, I wouldn't call myself a prepper. Um, my family have lived like this for years. My grandmother was always ready for anything and everything that ever happened, and that's just how we were raised. So you always had your cupboards full. You were ready for the winter if you got stuck in the home for a couple of weeks or whatever, and that has happened to me. Um, we had that ice storm back in 90, and uh, you know we were stuck in the house, and my in-laws were stuck for 13 days without power. So it does happen <laughs> when you least expect it. Then we had the polar vortex come through, and you know, if I wasn't ready, my animals would not have made it. I'll tell you that right now. Um, so it, it really pays to be prepared. But I was thinking about our pantries. Um, we'll get into the rest of it too, but your pantries. You know, this whole year you've had to get ready and to get your pantry prepared for all the things that you would need, whether it's your greens um, and your pantries. I also mean like your freezer, you know, because that's where I keep most of my greens that I, I eat. I do can the spinach and I do can kale and um, I keep broccoli and I keep Brussels sprouts in the freezer all the time. Um, I'm always eating those all the time. I love them, I love them. But you know, you got uh, kale and spinach and you can have pesto, um, Swiss chard, you need kraut, you know, just to be healthy for gut health, you know. I call that a green just because it is green but it can be red too, <laughs> your cabbage. But anyway, and then I always put up celery. I dehydrate mine because I use it for soups and that's pretty much all I ever use it for. Um, so I really don't need it, but if I'm gonna make soup or can of soup or whatever, I just get it out and um, put water with it to rehydrate it overnight or whatever and then I'm ready. But anyway, yeah, I get your, you should have plenty of greens on hand. Um, I call them the reds, the tomatoes. I use the tomatoes like crazy, whether it's um, diced or stewed or juice or salsa or marinara or um, my red pepper sauce that I make, um, spaghetti sauce, whatever. Um, I always have plenty of that on hand. And then when I think about spaghetti sauce, I always think about Alfredo because I love Alfredo. So I always make sure that in my pantry, I usually have six to eight jars of Alfredo sauce. And I don't even eat pasta that often, but I have it. And sometimes my daughter will call and say, Mom, if you're coming over, do you have any Alfredo sauce? Yeah, I do. Okay, I'll bring one. You know, whatever. We got it. So, um, you know, think about getting those things. Your oranges, your acorn squash, your butternut squash, pumpkin, yams or sweet potatoes, um, your orange beets, your orange peppers, persimmons, um, red lentils. Did I say pumpkins? Pumpkins. Yeah, I always put up pumpkin. Anyway. Get your orange food. I always make sure I have plenty of that. I always try to make sure that I have a healthy um, dose of every color of food because you try to get your vitamins from your food and you try to get um, what you need to be healthy, you know, you, instead of just, I mean, some people don't like very much, I know, but you should really try to have a variety in your pantry all the time. Um, your grains, same thing, you know, whether you have, um, you know, barley or rice or whatever you got, you know, have plenty of grains on hand and ready. Um, let's see, just your basic staples, like your sugar and your flour and your baking soda and your baking powder, your vanilla, your brown sugar. Um, I call staples crackers and summer sausage and cheese because if the lights go out and you can't cook dinner, you can always do that. I mean, if you're not a person that's canned food and doesn't have like a little uh, propane burner that you can heat your food up on or something like that. Uh, you can always do cheese and crackers, you know, always. 
Um, and I keep popcorn on the hand too all the time because that's nice to have when, you know, just as a regular snack. But yeah, your basic goodies, like and your salt and, um, you know, your basic staples, whatever. Your vinegars, um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, lemon juice, I always have plenty of lemon juice on because I can all the time, so I'm always using it. <coughs> Molasses, cornstarch, cream of tartar, um, alum, if you're a person that uses alum. I used to use alum a lot. Um, I think that's about it, I don't know. Stuff like that. And then your cleaning supplies, you know, your bleach, um, your soap, your shampoo, your conditioner, your lady supplies, baby supplies, lotions, paper towels, scrubbies, um, vinegar for cleaning. Again, Barkeeper's Friend, I always have on hand. Um, an all-purpose cleaner, you know, make your all-purpose cleaner if you want to. Um, it's easy to do. But, you know, just try to keep all that stuff on hand for the winter. And what I'm saying is because you never know when things are going to go bad. You never know. Um, household needs. And household needs, that's what I call, like, my oil lamp. My oil lamp wicks. Extra oil lamp oil. That way, no matter what, I have light and it puts off heat. Um, batteries um, for your flashlights and flashlights, if you're a person that wants to do that. I have solar um, light bulbs and we use those. They're always ready to go. Um, the power goes out. All I have to do is just click the little button on top and we have light. So it's always nice to have those on hand. You can get those from Amazon. Easy. You know, I really think they ought to have them at Walmart. They should, but they don't. But they should. I mean, I feel like everybody needs them, whether you use them in the chicken coop, you use them when you're camping, you use them in the house when the power goes out, whatever. They really should supply those at Walmart. I don't know why they don't. But um, ice melt, extra light bulbs and batteries. Let's see, um, I wrote down some stuff. Um, heat lamps and tarps and sand and um, extra animal bedding and feed, at least for a good couple weeks extra stuff for your animals, I would say for probably two to three weeks, depending on where you live. Um, we always kept a four by eight sheet of OSB because a couple times we've had a window break in the winter when there was a really bad storm and limbs fell or something. Um, one time I just walked right through the sliding glass door right before we were going on vacation and broke it. I think I was like 10, broke the whole thing. I don't even know how I did it. I was, I guess dad was standing there and dad always waited for us to walk through the door first. And so he was standing there and I thought he's just waiting for me to get out the door so he could shut up behind us and we could take off, you know? <laughs> so I walked right through and broke the whole thing. So thank goodness we had that OSB, got it up on there and uh, got the door all sealed off when we took off from vacation. But in the middle of winter, um, when it's bad and it's cold out and you get a broken window, it's really nice just to have that extra wood around so you could just go ahead, cut it whatever shape you need to and get it up there to block off that window so that you, your house stays warm. So that's always nice to have that. Um, duct tape, of course, for God knows what. Tarps of every size for your animals or for any roof problem or uh, something that needs to be covered if you're getting to have an ice storm or um, heavy snow or just to block the snow for part of the chicken run, whatever. I use tarps for all kinds of stuff to cover my wood, um, everything and anything. Um, uh, good rugs by the entryway, inside and out, both, because you got people coming in with messy feet and stuff, a place to put your gloves and hats and coats and all that good stuff. I'm um, trying to think. Um, oh, your stuff for your car to melt the ice on the windshield to get plenty of that ahead of time and get it ready. I always did. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, get your boots out. <laughs> Mine aren't even out yet. I had to go find them. So, um, I was like, Oh my gosh, it's cold out. And I can't stand my feet getting cold. So I went and hunted those down. I didn't have them out and ready like I should have, but we went to Tennessee, like I said, and, uh, it was in the high seventies there. We're talking about getting ruined. <laughs> I came back here and it was 25 within two days. I was like, holy cow, I'm not ready for that. But anyway, I did get ready. <laughs> and I'm ready now. I got my coat out. I got my hat and gloves out. I got my scarf out. Um, you know, and that's another thing. Your car ready. Get your car ready. If your car's not ready, we're getting ready to go into November. And it'll go fast. The next thing you know, it'll be December. You know, make sure your tire's in good shape. Make sure you're ready for the snow. Um, we already had it snow yesterday. So make sure you are ready 
you know, do what you gotta do. Whether it's a tune-up for your engine, whether it's the tires, new tires, and or the air in the tires, or just getting the car cleaned out before the winter comes, um, and before the holidays. A car ready also means getting it ready for traveling for holiday, you know, or traveling around on Christmas. It, there's no fun going back and forth to everybody's house and bringing gifts and all the stuff. You can't get the stuff in the car if your car's a mess. I have a couple friends I know that keep a car like, whoo, that's nasty, dirty. <laughs> But they're busy all the time, and it ends up being like that. I don't hold against them. You know, life is life. We're all different. But anyway, yeah, so it's nice to get the car cleaned out. You know, get it all vacuumed out and smelling good and stuff. And it makes the holidays go by so much easier. On top of the fact, if you are traveling, make sure you get blankets in there. Make sure you get extra, like, something that can hold some drinks when you get ready to go. Um, some beef jerky or, you know, some... I don't know, snacks of some kind. If you're a diabetic, make sure you got something in there for that, you know. Just make sure you're covering all your bases. If you need something, if you get stuck in the snow, you know, put your shovel in the back if you're gonna go on vacation and or you're traveling far and the weather might be bad, you know, be ready for that kind of thing. That's what I'm talking about. You always I was raised to always be ready for just about anything. So <laughs> that's how I do it. I'm always ready for just about anything. I mean I might not have my coat here and stuff, but really, I've got like several things I could have worn that's really super warm, so it's not like it's a big deal. I am really ready. I just don't like to be ready for 25 degrees because I'm a wimp. <laughs> like, so, I guess I don't mind working in the cold because you're working all the time, but if you're not working, it's hard to stay warm, you know? So and if you're gonna sit in the car on the side of a highway broke down because something happened to your engine or what have you, you better be ready. So if you have to throw in an extra pair of, you know, a pair of boots in there, if you're not used to wearing boots all the time, better to be safe than sorry and have your feet warm, extra pair of socks, whatever, I've been there. I came home one time and for some reason, I couldn't get in the house. I don't know what, it, I don't know what was wrong with the door, but it froze up and I could not get the door to open at all. I remember this, this was probably like, um, probably about eight years ago and it was so cold and it had rained so much and there was water everywhere. My feet got wet going back and forth to the house because everything was flooded. And um, thank God I had extra socks. I took my socks and shoes off in the car and I put my other socks on because I was like, holy cow, I gotta do something. So I was ready though. I had a blanket and I had extra socks and I think I even had an extra pair of shoes, but I didn't put them on. I just turned the car back on and put my feet under the heater with my dry socks on. But anyway, that's that. Let's see what else we got on my list. I put, oh, a staple gun with staples. Um, in case you got a staple, a tarp up or a wire to wire it up, or duct tape, duct tape it up, whatever. Um, more bedding for your animals and stuff. Um, something to move your animals in. Um, we had to move our animals. We had a flood and the water came up pretty high one time. And I really didn't know if it was gonna come up much more than that anyway, but the road was covered and everything. And so I always have something there that I can get my animals in really quick and get them out of there. Um, and that's what I did that day. So we moved all the goats, we moved everything. Um, it was like crazy, but we got it done. We got it done like within, I think we had it done within a half hour, had everything moved. I even had to go down and get my bees. You guys, I had to walk through water up to my hips and I picked up my whole beehive the whole thing that time I just had one I picked the whole thing up I don't even know how I didn't get stung I mean I had nothing on but it, like a tank top at the time and um I uh, picked the whole thing up moved it all the way up to the top deck and put it on a table up there they never bothered me didn't sting me I mean it was amazing but yeah I had to move those guys too I, I remember that so well um, let's see what else on my list. Oh, extra quilts and uh, blankets and stuff like that. You need to have them ready in case people come by or people get stranded at your place, or you need to cover windows and stuff with it when it gets super, super cold like that polar vortex. I ended up putting quilts on my sliding glass door and it made such a big difference. And you can also block off rooms that you're not using by using a quilt or shutting the door and putting a quilt over or whatever. But, um, we did that if, as long as it didn't have water <laughs> in there, you don't want to burst your pipes. But yeah, um, I always give all the blankets a fresh wash anyway when winter's coming. That way they smell good when you get them out and put them on. So, and don't forget the flannel sheets, right? <laughs> Gotta have flannel sheets. It's no fun to be cold. I hate getting into a bed when the sheets are freezing. So I always try to get my flannel sheets out, get them all freshened up and get ready for those on the bed. 
And let me see what else is on my list. Um, I think that's about it. I mean, of course there's a million other things, but that'll get you going, you know. Also, if you're gonna go on a traveling holiday, you might want to see, you know, check with the neighbors first, make sure they're not going anywhere too, so they can take care of um, whatever, your plants or whatever, whoever does that, take care of your animals and stuff if you don't take them with you. Um, you might wanna check with them ahead of time because they might be going somewhere too. You might have to make other arrangements. But it's always nice just to think about that stuff ahead of time so you're covered because nothing's worse than things than you got it thinking, oh, everything's cool and last minute, oh, the neighbor's not even gonna be in town, so nobody's there gonna be there to feed your animals or whatever you got going on. So just always try to think ahead. That's what I always do. Always try to be ready. Always try to have an extra coat in the car. Um, whatever. You don't realize how many times I've come across somebody with an accident um, in the middle of winter and there they are, you know, with hardly anything on, like to keep themselves warm in such a bad situation when it's very, very, very cold out. Um, or an accident and they can't even get to their coat because they don't know where it flew to after they got hit so bad. But yeah, always, I always keep an extra blanket in the car, an extra really warm sweater or coat or something and extra hats and gloves. I always keep them in the car because you just really never know. You really don't. It's always safe, better safe than sorry. But Anyway, um, also, just so you know, it's time to get that driveway ready and your walkways ready and everything cleared from bushes that are overgrown or um, unsteady rocks or just junk that's in the way. Clear it all because when the winter comes and the snow comes, you don't want to go out there and fall on that or have somebody stop in and fall on it or have the Amazon guy fall on it trying to get your horse to drop off a, a you know, gift or whatever or package that you got. So anyway, these are just things to think of, just a little public announcement, because I know we just turned into November, being November 1st here today, but you know it comes on fast. It's always fast and furious, and it's like, ugh, before you know it, you're out there with snow up to your knees, and it's just dreadful. <laughs> That's the way I feel about it one time. One time I was out there taking care of the chickens, and I had those, like, Ugg boots on, and the bottom of them are slick. And we had to go down a hill to take care of the chickens. And we had so much snow, it was crazy. And so I went to the side of the chicken house there in the chicken run to um, open it and get in. And it was so slick and the top of the snow had kind of compacted um, and made like a crust up there. And my, my feet, because I had no traction on those boots, went straight out to the side. I, I was like doing Chinese splits and about broke my legs. I, I couldn't even get up. I had to yell for help. I mean, I could not get up. I couldn't roll back because there was snow back there. I mean, it was all I could do to get in there. I had like a little area about this big and I was right up against the fence. I was like <laughs> trying to pull myself up the fence. It was crazy. Anyway, so just make sure if you are putting your boots in the car or you're getting them ready by the door, make sure they have good traction. Just a word to the wise. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to keep going with these apples. And I'm going to do a little canning on the next video, which will probably be, see, today is Wednesday. So I'm going to put this up Friday. So you guys, we can look for that. And make your list of the things you need to do to get ready for the winter or for your traveling for the holidays. And uh, I wish you all well and safe travels if you do travel. But I hope this uh, winter season goes off without a big old vol uh, polar vortex like that one time or bad, bad weather. You know, I, I don't know. We really haven't had bad winters or anything. When I was a kid, we had snow, man. We always had snow. I remember driving down a road in the old Ford pickup truck and the snow was up to the windows on the side and there was only enough room on the road to drive the truck. There wasn't two lanes. If somebody else would have come down there, I would have been in trouble. Oh, there's no turning around. I was probably 16, just got my license. I was, I mean, things are so different then. You just went, you know, you just, you know, buck up buckaroo, you know, this is life. <laughs> Get in there now, jump in and start learning. So, I mean, I wanted to go to my friend's house. Okay, go. In the truck, went. And I remember I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I hope nobody comes. I just kept praying. I hope nobody comes down the road. I hope nobody comes down the road because you can't turn around. And we didn't have cell phones back then. You know, now you could always call for help or something. No, 
you, if you wanted help, you're going to be trekking to the house, the next house, and hoping they were home. So, <laughs> I don't even know how we made it, you guys. Um, we were tough as nails, evidently, and didn't even know it. Because the things that we did and how we got by is just amazing when you look back on it. But that's a whole nother story. All right, you guys. Catch you on Friday with this video. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. See ya.